Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to take your fully colored in weeping woman and make her look a little bit more like the original. So if we have a look at the original, you'll notice that there are areas that are quite textured. Now, texture refers to the surface appearance and quality of a painting or a sculpture or an artwork in general. Is it lumpy? Is it smooth? Is it very thick and painterly? Or can you see the brush strokes? Or perhaps you can't see the brush strokes. Let's have a closer look. In this particular painting of the Weeping Woman, you can see in the background the Brush strokes are quite thick. You can almost see the brush and the marks that it's left. And then in other areas, the paint is quite blended. It's quite smooth. The transition from the yellow to the green is a very smooth transition. And you can see similar effects on the hair over here where it becomes yellow and then purple. So what I'm going to do today is show you how you can use Photoshop brush tools and the pattern fill to create various textures on your work. So first thing we're going to do is open up your Photoshop and we're going to open up both images. We're going to open up the one that you worked on, okay? And we're also going to open the painting. So you can just go up here and go file open and find the weeping woman. Here she is here, just open her up. And just to remind you how to get both up at the same time, we simply go to window, arrange, two up vertically. And there you go. Next thing you need to do is just make sure you have your tools and your layers and your history palette. So again, go to window, make sure history is checked, layers are checked and your tools too. So tools, by the way, live right down the bottom. Mine are already there. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you a little, few little shortcuts first. Because we're coloring in this image on the right, if you need to move it around, just click on your space bar and it gives you a little hand and it lets you move it. You may also want to enlarge that so that you can sort of get some detail. The shortcut for that is Command Plus and then Command Minus to make it smaller. And if you want to get it back to its original size, it's Command Zero, okay? Now I'm just going to use my hand tool to move it around because I'm going to actually work on the hand. I'm just going to click Command Plus, my hand tool again, so I can see it. So I'm going to work on this area. Okay, so you can see I'm going to use this texture here. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to select this area with the magic wand. Okay, and that helps me keep within the black lines okay so it's going to be quite neat now i'm going to go over to uh, my toolbox and i'm going to sample the color that i want to add now i want to add this kind of uh actually i'm going to add this green color to my limey uh yellow my greenish yellow notice when i sample it it changes the color here now what i'm going to do now is introduce you to a new tool and it's called the brush tool and the brush tool lives here, okay? So it looks like a paintbrush. And it also lives in the same section as your pencil tool. So if you click, you can see pencil tool. So it may be that if you can't find your brush tool, it may be hidden behind the pencil tool, okay? So to check, you just simply uh, click this little triangle here. And if you can't see... Your, if you can't find your brush tool at all, don't forget these three little dots here. Um, there's a little triangle. Click on that and go to edit toolbar and drag it, okay, from this side. 
to that side. Okay, so that's a quick demo on how to find your tool if it's not in your toolbox. Okay, so I'm going to grab the brush. Notice what happens to the options up the top when I click brush. It suddenly gives me all these various options. I can click here and I can see there's all these different brushes I can use. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to use the soft round one, um, which is a soft fuzzy brush but there's also a hard round one and there are various other tools worth experimenting with. Okay, just make sure that you're clicking on brushes because as you scroll down, they become pencils and they won't work as well. So just make sure that you are actually clicking on a brush. So I'm gonna pick the soft round one. Now I can make it quite a hard soft brush so you can change the hardness of the edges. You can also change the size, okay, of that brush. So, you know, that's the size there, but I can also make it bigger. Um, I prefer to use a shortcut and that shortcut are the curly braces that live uh, on your keyboard, as you can see, and they're just beneath your toolbar, uh, sorry, beneath your delete button. So there's a left and a right brace. So left is small brush, small, and the right gives you a bigger brush. Okay, so let's go back to our image. So I'm going to use, a, I'm gonna make this brush smaller and I'm going to very carefully uh, apply this color with a brush. You can see it's very soft. And the reason why is not just because I've used a soft brush, which that's one of the reasons actually. Uh, if you come up here, you can see I've actually got my flow on 18%. If I put it on 100%, it's actually quite dark, okay? So I can control the amount of paint or color by simply clicking on the flow. I can also uh, um, control the opacity or how see through that color is. So if I've got it on 100%, it's going to be quite dark. And if I change it to maybe say 37%, it's very soft. And you can build up your color that way and create that lovely uh, transition from green to yellow quite um, easily. Okay, so that is how you create a nice sort of soft blended texture. And of course, you can do that blended texture to the hand, you can apply it to the face and also to the hair. Just make sure you use your magic wand to select the area that you want to work on. So Command D to get rid of my marching ants. And I'm just going to uh, go back to my work and I'm gonna have a look at the background. Now the background is a bit different. The texture on the original is quite thick um, and lumpy. And now I'm gonna try and recreate that thick, thick lumpy texture that looks so interesting and makes the work uh, so exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to create um, your own texture that you can then fill use with your fill tool. So we all know how to use a fill tool. We all use the edit fill to fill an area with color. Now I'm gonna show you how you can fill an area with texture. So the first step to do that is we're going to use this selection tool. It's a rectangular tool and it lets you make a selection in the form of a rectangle. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna click on the original painting and I'm going to select this area here. Um, because I quite like that texture and I wanna use that texture on this section of my work. So what I'm going to do is once I've selected that, I'm going to go to edit and I'm gonna scroll down to define pattern. So I'm gonna make my own pattern and I'm gonna save it on Photoshop. So define pattern, it lets me choose it and I'm going to just call it uh, weeping woman one, because I might make lots of patterns on Photoshop. And I'm gonna click okay. 
Now, Command D to get rid of those marching ants. I'm going to use my magic wand and I want to apply that pattern to this area here. And now I'm going to go um, to my edit field. Now this is very familiar because you spent probably a whole lesson using this tool uh, last time. So we're going to go to edit fill. Okay. So have a look here. You've got foreground color, which you're quite familiar with. So you can fill it with the foreground color. You can fill it with the background color, a different color. But if you scroll down, you can also fill it with a pattern. Okay, so I'm going to click on pattern and it gives me various options. Um, you can see here, I've already saved that area. Um, you can see I've got a whole lot of patterns that I've actually made myself from various artworks. And here's the pattern that I made just then. And, then I'm, and I'm going to click OK. And it's asking me, do I want it to look like that? Mm. No, I don't. So I'll just go through that again. So edit, fill. Okay, this is what I need you to do. So over here, it says script, click on script. Okay. And you have, when you click on script, you get all these options. This is what I wanted to show you. For instance, you've got the brick pattern fill. So let's have a look at that. I'll click okay. And it gives me options of how I want uh, to place that pattern. Do I want it, the scale to be really big or really small. So you can play with that. Do I want to play with the spacing? Probably not, no. Okay, so you can experiment with all these different options on how you want your pattern to, to appear. It's not exactly um, like Picasso's, but it certainly gives that impression. So there you go. You have quite a lovely texture there that resembles very much the texture that Picasso used. So you can have a little play with that, Command D. Uh, so that is how you can apply two types of texture, textures to your work. The blended texture using the brushes, the various brushes that are available, okay? And of course, the pattern fill, where you get to sample a section of Picasso's work and turn it into your own pattern and then fill it, um, fill sections of your artwork with it. Okay, so that's it for now. Have a go of it um, and have fun. Thanks guys. And don't forget to save your work, save it twice, save it as a Photoshop file, okay? And save it. And also when you, when you do save your work, make sure that you change the name because you don't want to save over the original. Okay, you want to give it a different name. So I'm just going to add texture uh, to this particular file name. Click save. I've already got one, but I'll just replace it and then save it as a JPEG as well. Okay, save it on your in your VA folder. Scroll down to JPEG, save. Okay. Okay, great. So have a go and um, enjoy.